One of the things you want to do when you're using the probes is to keep a record of the class's ideas. And one of the strategies that you can use to do this is called our best thinking so far. So create a chart or use the whiteboard in your classroom and across that chart or across that whiteboard write our best thinking so far. And under that, chart the different ideas that students have related to the probe at that point. And if you leave the chart up, as you go through the lessons, you can refer back to our best thinking so far and ask students, do we still agree with this? Or are any of these ideas up here ones that we can take off that we no longer agree with? Or do we have other ideas that we want to add that maybe we did not think of initially? So what this strategy does is it promotes learning by giving the students the opportunity to get their ideas out and consider how their ideas are changing over time as they go through the lessons. And at the same time, it informs instruction because it gives the, the teacher a sense of where the class is and how their ideas are evolving over time. So it's essentially a chart called our best thinking so far that the teacher and the students can both refer to during the learning process. You may be familiar with the turn and talk strategy. It's used a lot in classrooms. But with the probes, it's very important to give students the opportunity to think as individuals first before they talk with a partner. So a strategy you might use for this is one you're probably familiar with. It's called think, pair, share. The think part is giving the student the time to think individually first to commit to an answer choice, and to think about their explanation. How would they support that answer choice? And then when they've had the opportunity to think about it individually, they can then share their answer choice and explanation with a partner. And it's through that partner talk that students begin to consider new ideas, ways of thinking, solidify their initial thinking, and perhaps even engage in argumentation if they chose different answers. The next step would be then to, to share in a small group, maybe four or five students, or to have a whole class discussion. This is a strategy that supports learning because when students individually think first, they can get their ideas out, and then their ideas may evolve and change as they have the opportunity to talk with their peers. At the same time, it's a strategy that informs instruction because during the pair talk, the teacher is circulating and carefully listening to students as they talk with each other, as well as the teacher is carefully listening during the whole class or small group discussions as well, and making notes of areas where there may be conceptual difficulties that need to be addressed in subsequent instruction. It's also a really important strategy for ELL students because sometimes those students initially have difficulty formulating their ideas, but by talking it out first with a partner, it's then easier for them to verbalize their explanations in a small group or a whole class discussion. There are several anonymous strategies that you can use to collect student responses. One of these strategies that is quite engaging to students is called commit and toss. It works like this. After students have selected their answer choice and they've constructed their explanation, have the students stand up with the probe in their hand and crumple it into a ball. When you give them the signal to toss, the students toss their balls throughout the classroom, and when you give them the signal to stop, they pick up one of the balls and then they open it, they take a look at the answer choice, they read the explanation, and from that point on, they only speak from the paper that's in their hand. So this is anonymous because students are not sharing their own thinking, but they're sharing what's on the paper that's in their hand. This is a strategy 
that promotes learning because all students are engaged in examining the answer choices, but at the same time, it's safe for students because no one is identified with their own individual answer choice. It's also a strategy that informs instruction because the teacher can quickly poll the class, for instance, by saying, raise your hand if you have a paper that shows answer choice A, answer choice B, and so on. So you can get a quick read of where the class is. Now, if tossing paper around your classroom may get a little bit out of control, uh, you might want to use a variation of this strategy called commit, fold, and pass. Again, students commit to their answer choice, they construct their explanation, and then when students are ready, have them stand up, holding their paper, folding it in half, and when you give the signal, they exchange papers and they pass their papers around the class until you give them the signal to stop, and then they open up the paper that they have in their hand, they look at the answer choice, they examine the explanation, and they speak from that paper that's in their hand from that point on. This inquiry helps you prepare the Observe Matter activity. This hands-on activity requires 15 minutes of prep time, takes 30 minutes to complete, and works best when students are placed in small groups. The purpose of this activity is for students to investigate differences in types of matter and how well they can change shape. Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. It can exist in three main states, solid, liquid, or gas. All matter is made up of very small particles that are arranged in different ways. Solids have a definite shape. They do not change shape when moved to a different container. Liquids do not have a definite shape. They can change shape to fit their container. Gases do not have a definite shape either. They can also change their shape to fill their container. As you prepare for this activity, complete this checklist before class starts. First, gather the materials. Each group needs a syringe, a sponge, a number cube, modeling clay, a large beaker, a graduated cylinder, and water. For this activity, the sponges must be pliable. Dampening sponges with water and wringing out excess water makes the sponges bendable. The sponges should always return to their original shape. To help ensure a smooth activity, include this topic in your pre-activity discussion with your class. Students visit three different stations during this activity. At station one, students use a syringe to investigate the properties of air. Model how to operate the syringe. The Inquiry Rewind student video demonstrates this. Consider showing that portion of the video to your class. At station two, students investigate solids. For this station, model any steps in which your students have difficulty. At station three, Students investigate liquids. For this station, model any steps in which your students have difficulty. Students should follow the procedure for this activity. Remind students to accurately record their observations after each test. Empty water into the sink. Dry wet containers. Store containers and the remainder of the materials for future activities. Students should observe that air and water easily take the shape of their containers. Solids, like clay, can be molded into different shapes, but it retains the last shape in which it was placed. Some solids are rigid and do not change their shape. Still, other solids are pliable and can be twisted, squeezed, and rolled, but can return to their original shape. When students finish, bring them together to discuss their findings. If some students are unable to view the expected observations, show the Inquiry Rewind student video before starting the discussion. Then, use the questions in the Teacher's Edition to guide your discussion.